your very presence this morning is quite a testimony of how indeed the Lord directed you. How indeed the Lord guided your life. Now let me tell you, God shall not and cannot give you up. Come what all of the situation to fall or to happen in this world. I mean, uh, all of the prophecies even will have to come to pass. And, you know, the, uh, the climax of this will be the manifestation, you know, of, uh, of the son of the wickedness. Before the coming and the return of the Lord, all of these things will happen, but there will be this one truth that will remain and will continue to stand and cannot be shaken, cannot change and cannot alter. What is that? God is invisibly always in our sights. Amen? Amen. He guides us. He leads us. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, even in the middle of confusion, we still and always can have clarity. As people, you, you know, are mixed up. They don't know what to do. They are, they are lost. Uh, those who don't have God in their lives do not anymore know what to do or how to respond in a situation where it is a surprise. But you and I, ladies and gentlemen, we still can rest and be in, be in peace. Why? Because we have our God guiding and leading us. Amen. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. Jesus was giving them a situation, the twelve. He didn't have any more enough time to explain to them, but he was, he was to tell them exactly in clear cut and in a very detailed way how it's going to be happened for the rest of the two days. He said, I'm going to die. I will be hand, I will be nailed on a tree. Men will betray me. Jesus even said, not one of you will, uh, you know, will, uh, will remain and continue to follow me. All of you will leave me. It was, it was just about moments ago where Jesus uh, told, frankly, uh, Judas Iscariot that you will deny, you will uh, betray me and sell me in, you know, in just in 30 pieces of silver. I mean, all of those things are unraveling shock or bombshells, you know, to the, the Bible said, the setting, by the way, of the verses that we are reading was during uh, the, the Last Supper. Like today, we will be commemorating once again as our custom the first Sunday of February, the Lord's table. It was, you know, the, uh, the Last Supper. Jesus' words were too fast, but you know, uh, the twelve were able, were able to understand what Jesus was talking about. And then, He gave them, you know, a, a detailed direction, a uh, a guidance what to happen and what they must do and what they can do for the Passover. Because the Bible said at the time it was, it was the feast, it was the greatest feast in the nation. And they were obliged to join with it. It was the Passover. And Jesus told them, you prepare for us, you know, a place where we can uh, break the bread. Where we can have the Passover. So, the apostles were kind of like on a question mark. What they will do and what, uh, what they will do and where will they go to prepare the Passover? Because it seems that this fourth time of the Passover, by the way, according to Bible scholars, there are probably three or four times Jesus joined together with the apostles in celebrating the Passover. Are you still with me? Amen. And it seems that because it was the last, something bigger and greater they could feel and they could sense inside their hearts. So Jesus was telling them, I want you to prepare the Passover. Something like it was an implied statement, a word of the Lord that prepare the greatest, the most significant Passover in his four, four times that I have with you. But on the back of the head of the apostles, are you still there, brothers and sisters? Amen. Human as they are, limited as they are, like you and me, I like you to look to the next person beside you and say, I'm human. And tell that person still say, I am limited. I am limited. Because we are human, we are limited. Now they were caught up in a situation thinking how and where, or rather where and how can they prepare the Passover. 
But in this uh, five verses, ladies and gentlemen, God exactly give them the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four steps in how can they prepare what is this? The Passover. That is why in our key verse that we read a while ago, they rejoice at the end. When the Bible said, the disciples set out and went to the city and found him as and found it just as he had told them and he prepared the Passover. Let me tell you, everything that God says, it's a 100% guarantee, it shall happen. Amen. When the Lord promises you something, it can be a blessing, it can be a success, it can be a direction, it can be a guidance, it will 100% happen. It's a guarantee. It's a guaranteed assurance. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. Because God cannot lie. He's not, he's not like a man that changes his mind. Today is yes and tomorrow no. And then on the third day, I don't know. God will exactly say, this is it. This is what I want. This is the way you will follow. Even if it will go and lapse a thousand years or two thousand years, it will not change because God is always definite and precise to His words. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. <laughs> Certainty amidst confusion. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the situation was, okay, the verse that we read a while ago, everybody was very sad. Because the Lord told them plainly that he will die. He will be nailed on the tree. And uh, they were whispering each other as Jesus was telling them, one of you will deny, one of you will, will betray me. And uh, you know they, they had they had something, a sense of, of guilt, and uh, they were talking among themselves if was it he or was it you know, another another apostle or that apostle to betray the Lord. They didn't have any idea. And that is why the Lord, as they, they were mixed up, as they were confused, told them exactly what to happen. He said, okay, after telling that it was uh, Judas Iscariot, he said, you go he he uh, he give what is this uh, a job a duty to do of the apostles into a city and then when you can go into the city there's a fork road there will be a woman carrying a pitcher a jar a jar of water you follow that woman you tail that woman I tell you that's not easy you know uh, to be told by the Lord to stalk a person. Nonetheless, it is God's guidance. What could you do but follow it? Amen? Amen. Hello, are you there? Amen. Now, let me remind you, when God guides, sometimes those guidance can be quite bizarre. But if we follow and obey His guidance, the guidance of the Lord will always succeed and He cannot fail. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. So, the couple of the apostles, and their names were not you know, mention of who they were, started to follow, indeed, this woman. And the woman, you know, uh, noticed them and uh, questioned them. Uh, we can read that. Who are you? And the sign was this. When the woman will ask if who they were, they will just plainly tell the woman, the teacher sent us to meet you. Because the teacher told us, it is you who will prepare us and tell us or guide us where we will have our uh, Passover this evening. And without a Jew, let, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, have you talked to a total stranger? Are you there? Amen? Amen. Nakakita na ba mo, ka-experience na ba mo, kanapitong tao na dili kakaila, stranger ba, 100%. Now, did you try to ask a 100 peso friend from that stranger? Oh, well, you know. That's, that's quite embarrassing, ladies and gentlemen. Amen? And uh, this, this time when uh, uh, the two of the apostles, you know, asked and requested something uh, to the woman, it's more than, it's more than uh, 100 peso. 
Because they told the woman, the master or the teacher sent us to tell you to prepare us uh, the Passover. To lead us to the place where we will have the Passover celebration. In other words, literally, the apostles were telling the woman, where is the catering reception? Hello, are you there? Amen. Now, quite, uh, what is this, ladies and gentlemen? Very surprising and uh, quite a shock because the woman, without any double thought, without more questions to the apostles, he told the duo, you just come and follow me. And the woman lead them into a house that has a second floor. And he opened up the door and the hall was so large and there was a long table and the woman said, this is the place where you will have the Passover. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that's how mighty our God is. He can lead and He can give a direction into our lives. Even in those times when we do not know what to do or where to go, our God can give us the guidance and the directions. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, when we serve the Almighty, the saints shall follow on us. When uh, we serve our God, He will, He can do and He will do what He did to the apostles. Amen? Amen. I still can remember on that one day, the Lord clearly told me, I was 18 years old, I want you to serve me. And uh, after, you got to marry her. As I told you, there are some of the guidance of the Lord that are quite bizarre. Sometimes it is something the opposite or the irony of what He wanted, your dislikes. Well, like the first, I did not right away be by God, but it took me over a day, at least more than 24 hours. Why? Because the woman is not my girlfriend. And prior previews, we had something like, not, not really a fight or a disagreement. It was just like, she disliked me. Well, I also disliked her. Hello, are you there? <laughs> so, I went. It was a scheduled prayer. After the prayer, we talked together. And it just happened. And I went home and talked to my mother. And my mother cried and said, Okay, son. Because according to her, for 10 years, she never had a baby. When uh, my, my dad and, and my, my dad and mom lived together. And then God made, what is this, a, a trade with God. He made, she made a covenant with the Lord telling, God, if you will just give me a baby, if you will just give me a son, I will give him to you. He will going to serve you. I do not care if you will grow and become a priest one day. And so my mother had me and uh, well I become a priest, not, not with the robe, but priest in the kingdom of God. So at that moment at the time when I asked my mother, Mama, I'm going to serve God and uh, you know I will cleave with Stadelia. She, she wanted, you know, to oppose, she wanted to say no, but she was reminded, I believe the Holy Spirit reminded her about that vow, about that promise that she had with God. She let me go, she said, you go on up as, as the Lord guide you, as the Lord lead you. Now, I'm talking about some 24 years ago, something that took place happened to my life, to our lives. Now, let me tell you, God's guidance will stand and will stand true forever. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. When we serve the Lord, the guidance and direction will going to follow us. Amen. Uh, Forty years ago, 2011, it was a February. I went home and talked to Sister Delia. I think the Lord, the Lord grants me to go and study again. And some units that I needed to uh, to comply, 
And uh, the lapse is actually 20 years. And not easy, you know, when you are in my age, to go and enroll and return back to the basic and uh, become a student like many of the students that are now here and submit to the same routine. And Sister Delia told me, told me instead, replied to me instead with this line, as long as it cannot hamper your service to the Lord, you go. Because she knew, or she knows when I say, the Lord is guiding me, she knows that it will stand. When it is the Lord's guidance, we cannot fight against it, but rather submit. Hello, are you there? Amen. But please do not call and always say, the Lord guided me, and do not or never do it when the Lord is not guiding you. Amen? You will be embarrassed. Then I go to the girl, God is guiding me to tell you I love you. Then I go to a boy and say, the Lord told me in a vision that you're going, you're going to be my husband. And the guy, like, on a shaka. Guidance. Say the word guidance. Guidance. We went from one college to another college. And uh, we prayed, of course. And uh, Sister Delia was going with me then at a time. And we went to this one college. And the Lord just talked to us inside our hearts, to her and to me. This is the place. And funny it is, I stayed in that college for two years. Uh, there how many uh, units? There how many units I took for five semesters? Ladies and gentlemen, and you know what? In all of the subjects that I I, I, uh, I enrolled, I only can count how many days I went to the school. My teachers teachers give me like a B A ninety. My highest my highest my highest grade was on our uh, on our research or on our thesis. I had ninety, and all of my. Members, you know, in my group were very happy telling me Kuya or Pastor were, uh, were so much happy because in the whole of these four years of our stay in this college, we never had a grade such as 19 because all of us, because we are a group, all of us did receive 19. You see what the Lord guides. Amen? Amen. So all of you were excited as well. Thank you very much for joining with my dream, with my vision and the guidance of the Lord. Because my real intention as the Lord guides is really to go, you know, and enroll to this university. Because that which I talked a while ago, or my hesitations when I said, Lord, I'm, I'm not willing to give you my life, but how is that? I have my personal ambitions. I had my dreams. I had my dreams too. Now, actually, to be honest, one of my reservations why I did right away said yes to the calling of God, because it, was not, it wasn't my mom who sent me to college. I have a cousin who how many years who sponsored me and went and uh, who sponsored me so I was able to go to uh, uh, I was able to go and enroll to a uh, yes to, to a college and you know what in all of the uh, nephews and nieces he sent most of them you know did not uh, did not succeed to uh, the sponsorial that, you know, uh, she gave us a sacrifice. One flung another, you know, married and uh, had to go home and tell, tell the dad I'm pregnant. And, uh, you know, two are involved to drugs, another into alcohol. I was, you know, amongst the seven, I was the only one that she was telling, you know, Burley, uh, I really do have high hopes and uh, beliefs on you that you're gonna make it and you will make it because you know I can remember to what I promised to you that you know that that kept to be ringing on me because you know uh, saying yes to the call of God I will have to give up my personal ambitions and you know even to offend the one who sent me to college but I needed to do them because it was the Lord who guided me but I tell you when the Lord owes when the Lord knows He's seeing to it that He can pay you and He can pay you, ladies and gentlemen, not, not just twofold, not just threefold, fourfold, but even a hundredfold. Amen? Amen. And back on me, telling me one day, I still owe you, son. I'm bound, I'm bound to bring to pass your dreams and your desires in your heart. But it's not just the same. Why? Because I see how the Lord had blessed my family. After my daughter, not my son. 
And I've seen you, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you, you, every single one of you that we see are growing in the Lord. You are our actual success to God be the glory. Amen. Every time we see you, you're like a reward. Every time we see you, you are a plaque. Every time we see you growing in the Lord, you are, uh, what is this? You are a, uh, you are a reward. You are our uh, you, you are our ribbon, you are our, you are our medallion, ladies and gentlemen. To God be the glory, amen? Amen. And uh, when, I went, when I went to this university, I didn't know where to go, how to do it, and whom I, I will approach. I was handling a Bible study to this, uh, to this agency. Are you still there? Amen. And in the process, the manager of this agency, the brother-in-law, or rather the sister-in-law of this manager, is the wife of this president of the alumni of this university. I don't know if you if you were able to follow. Make long story short, God just exactly led me to the right person. I talked to the man, I said, I have some intentions to enroll to this college and to this university. And he smiled at me, telling me, Pastor, I will call the dean of this college. Talk to him. You go, and he told me with this day. And appear to him and tell him that I sent you. I followed, you know, what he told me. Because God guided me. God directed me, directed me to the right man. Let me tell you, God can exactly bring you to the right person at the right time, at the right place. Amen. When it did not happen, that meaning it wasn't yet, it wasn't yet the right time. If he is not the man or he's not the woman, he's not the right person. Yeah. If it's not, I mean, the, that business did not work or that uh, application of a job or whatever uh, did not succeed. That meaning that business is not for you. It's not, it's not the right thing. Yeah. Or that job is not for you. It's not the right job for you. Yeah. There is something better, way better. The Lord is yet reserving for you. Everybody says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's give God a love of praise. I went very early. Wow, the file of all of the desires, other desires, students. And I was shaking. And you know what? I talked to the personnel. There were other people who were yet earlier than me. I was, I was supposed to be at the back. I talked to the personnel. And then he gave my word. To the dean and the dean said right away tell the man to come to me so i just looked to those earlier students and uh qualifiers as well to wait for their turn or on their queue i i i uh i went to the office passed to them and they just stared at me like this and then i talked to the dean and the dean said i know why you are here just give me your qualification and I wasn't ready at that time because I thought it would just be a preliminary conversation. But you know what? On that moment of that time, I already was slotted. And you know what? Tears were almost to fall from my, from my eyes. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, these are just few of the stories that I can relate to you that are similar as well to your own experiences that indeed, as we follow the Lord, same thing that happened to the apostles can also happen to you. Amen. Amen. Can happen to us. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now there are these three things I would like to remind us, ladies and gentlemen. And maybe we're going to claim this to the Lord today. Or every time when you are confronted with wrong things around, you may remind the Lord promised there, an exact guidance or an exact direction. I, I call it precision. Let's read verse 13. And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go, in, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Oh, here in, uh, in the account of the book of Mark, it was a man. But to another, uh, I think, another, another gospel, is it in, in Luke or... In John, it was a woman. Now, wasn't it precise? What is precision? Something which is not a random. Something which is not an accident. Something which is not a coincidence. Hello, are you there? Amen? Amen. I'd like you to place to your heart your palm and say this with me. Because of the Lord, 
There is no random that happens in me. There is no accident. There is no coincidence. Palampakan na lang si Lord Jesus. Hindi. Walay nagapang itabu sa atong kinabuhi mga egsoon na huwag plano o huwag tuyo ang Diyos ni ini. Daghan ng mga panalangin, mga maayong utang ng itabu sa atong kinabuhi, I tell you, ato na plano ang Diyos niya ito. Ano na sa'yo mga dili, mga maayong mga butang na nang hitabu or i-allow ni Lord sa itong kinabuhi? But that do not mean, di po't pasabot niya kagalitang ta sa ginoo. Eh, ano man, adunay plano ang Diyos talikod ni ini. God has some other plans, better plans, more beautiful plans behind all of this. Everybody says Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now think about it. It was a feast. And you know what? People in Jerusalem were by the millions. We, we were not talking here of an ordinary day. There are three major feasts in Israel, and one of one of the uh, one of the major feasts is, is the feast of the Passover. People were by the millions, and they were to meet a man or a woman to carry a, a woman or a man that is carrying a jar. Now let me tell you, jar is uh, a usual scenario in the olden times because uh, they don't have operational uh, water system then at the time of uh, the uh, the gospel. So they were to fetch water somewhere out from a well. Now it was a usual scenario where where either men or women are to carry jars and to fetch water. Are you still there? Amen? Amen. Now wasn't it very precise? Now a random, not an accident or a coincidence. Ladies and gentlemen, that God said to the two of the apostles, you enter into the center of the city and you can find a man carrying a jar. I can just see on the back of my head to those apostles that were commanded or were told by the Lord to do it. They had some, some, some of the doubts or some questions. Ah, this kind of direction is such a bizarre one. We are to find a man that is carrying a jar. There could be many. Indeed, as they entered into the city, wow. There was a lot, there were a lot carrying jars. There were so many men, you know, coming from coming and going, you know, from the uh, from the well of the city. But you know what? The Holy Spirit just what is this? Gave them the confirmation of the prompt where all of the eyes were directed to this man or to this woman carrying the jar. You kneel down, you pray, and you ask, Lord, I'm already 32. All, all of the, most of the women, rather, in the church do have now the families, except me. Can you give me, please, Almighty God, your guidance and your direction, that it is still your will, that I will have a man in my life. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it is the will of the Lord we will have our own families. Amen? Amen. Just only way we can have our own perfect time. Amen? Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. <laughs> oh, one, two, eighteen. I may be 18. You may have. You may perhaps, when you will be 33 or you will be 38. I do not know. Uh, what is this? Uh, Isaac married when he was... 40 years old. Abraham married when he was 75. 75. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not implying or I'm not expressing that you will at 40 years old or 75. What I'm saying is you will have your own perfect time. Amen. Kneel down and God telling you he will be a tall guy. He will be dark skinned. He will, he will be masculine. His work is a pilot. I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you an example. And then you rise up after you receive an impression from the Lord. And uh, a guidance from God will give you faith. And you go out and believe in, and, uh, believing in that word. You go out. There are how many tall guys you can see in the world? 
There are how many tall guys you can find in the church? Okay? And there are how many tall guys and dark skin? There are how many tall guys and athletic in build? Uh, there are how many guys that do have the same uh, description and are also pilots? You know what? You will go crazy to find and to look who exactly is this man? But you know what? He who gave you the word, or rather, he who gave you the word, is accountable to lead you exactly to that person or to that thing that he is pointing on you or leading you to that direction. Amen? Amen. He knows how to do it. I like you to look to the next person beside you and tell that person, tell the person exactly, God knows how to lead you there. Come on. God knows how to lead you there. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Imagine that. That is why this morning I'll, I'll, uh, I'll encourage let us come to God and ask Him, Lord, give us your precise direction. Exactly. Now we cannot waste our time, we cannot waste our energy, but precisely and exactly, God will lead us, you know, where we will go and what to do. And the next thing, ladies and gentlemen, I keep to be repeating this, but this is the key word. The next is, I like us to say, that's the verse, and he said to his disciples, and said to them, go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you, follow him. The next is direction. Direction is guidance. When the Lord guides, it will be fair. Priceless. Say the word priceless. Priceless. Priceless means to say you cannot just easily find it. It's something which is exceptional. It's something which is one of a kind. Now the verse that I like us to uh, see is in verse 14 it says there, and whatever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, Where is my guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. Wow. Kung sa atuwa pa ni mga Ixod sa Bisaya, kapresko ko na niya sa mga apostolis. Wait. Nonetheless, it was the Lord's kindness. What were their choice but to do it? It was their first time to meet. It was unbecoming. It was uh, an unmannered thing. Sa ato na, huwag matasan ba? Are you there? Amen. First time pa mo nag-meet mo yung ka- Whatever he enters, say to the master of the house. Pag sunod niya sa balay, ing na itong tao na ito sa balay. Man, the teacher told us, where is the guest room? You know, naging talk sa guest room. And where I may eat the Passover with my disciple. It translates to our time, where is the reception? Where is the catering? Now, there was no money paid. There was no, uh, there was no contract done. It was just but an outright word. Where is the place? Now let me pose you another question. Why do you think, and how in the world, the master of this house was able to right away say yes and without objections? What do you think did happen prior to this? Acquaintance or prior to this meeting or prior to this request. Do you think somehow, as well, God did talk to this man? Do you think somehow God did send his angels to ready to this person, to touch the heart of this person, that he would say no? Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, even way before we wake up, while we are still in our bed, while our eyes are still closed. Because you pray, Lord, that you will bless me. Lord, that you will guide me, that you will lead me. By the way, while you are still unconscious, the Lord already sent His angels to charge over you. Amen? Amen. Can I relate to you more what happened to us, Sister Delia, 24 years ago? Amen? Amen. It's only God. <laughs> Many of you knew already a little bit about this. So it was uh, March 14. 
March 14, 1991. I was in my prayer. I was in the house. And I laid into bed and I was about to sleep. I don't know if I was already asleep and the Lord awakened me. And He gave me a very strong word telling me, you go and tell this woman that you will marry her. Hello? Yeah. All of you boys here in the church, please do not emulate or copy what I did. <laughs> unless the Lord guided you. The Lord, unless the Lord will guide you. I woke up. And thought about that so deep. Why? Because the voice of God was so uh, was so clear, crystal clear that I heard. I could not be wrong. But I had so a lot of questions in my mind. Number one is, how is that Lord? I have my ambitions. Another, how is that Lord? We're not, we're not, uh, we're not on. And then another is. How is that Lord? I know she doesn't like me. How is that? Then after the prayer, the rest left, went home, and I stayed. Mr. Dels, can I talk to you? And she said, oh, I also would like to talk to you. <laughs> so we were private. And she talked first. She opened up her heart. And then as she was talking, the Lord reminded me of what she guided me and she led me that night, the day before March 15. Her tears were falling and tears were also starting to fall from my eyes. I hold her hand and told her, the Lord told me to tell you, I will, I will marry you. And she was in a shock. She could not. She was telling me one thing and I replied to her another thing and she was in a shock. She didn't know what to do and she didn't know how to respond. Make long story short, that's how the love story of Acts Church started. You, all of you, are our children and we are your dad and your mom. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Honestly, naisip ko talaga, ano kaya ang gagawin ni Sister Delia if I will feel, tell this? Will, will she slap me? Because, you know, we were together. And sometimes when I would tell some words because Sister Delia is a frank woman, she would just confront me right away. And I had some experience of, of that when we were together in, in this one church. And I was also quite apprehensive that that may happen again. And worse, I may be slapped. Imagine that you would tell a woman, I will marry you, and she's not your girlfriend. Like these people, like these people, place your shoes to these apostles. Maybe it is one of the reasons why their names were not written. I mean, they were a name. They were just what the Bible said, a couple, two of them. The job, the mandate was quite a heavy, a heavy job. They were to go and follow a man. Now they followed the man and they entered into the house and the master was there. And he would tell to the master, Master, where is the catering service? <laughs> where is the where is the where is the reception? I tell you, by law, provision of law, that is uh it is trespassing. You will you will you will enter into a place where it's not yours and you are uninvited, it is trespassing. Hello, amen. amen. When you will break a place that is not yours, enter into the place and break its robbery. Hello, amen. amen. Nonetheless, it was the guidance of the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, very nice, ladies and gentlemen, because beginning 1991, we already did see other families also follow. Grew up in the church pack. On uh, April 24, we will have another. Uh, I'm happy for Ah, uh, and I'm happy for Shai. These kids grew up literally in church. And uh, one which I cannot forget was also James and Ocheng. Brother James was new in uh, in the city. And uh, his brother James is really very attractive. So is Ocheng, no? Ocheng was a body, uh, what is this? Uh,